Hi there, my name is Joris Gillis and today I will present a new way to do nonlinear programming with Kasadi. I will talk about this new abstract layer on top of Kasadi called OptiStack that was created for teaching purposes. So it makes the nonlinear programming even easier than with standard Kasadi. Let's jump right in. What do we want to achieve in the end? We would like to transcribe optimization problems from how you would write them on paper into a computer program that solves them efficiently. That's the ultimate goal. Here is an example that is a optimization with two scalar variables, x and y, a simple objective and a single constraint. Uh, with the opti language, you will be able to write this as follows. You declare variables, you specify the objective function and you can put any line, any number of lines of subject to specify the solver and solve. Let's see. You get a nice output from IPOPT and in the end you get some numeric solution. So that's the end goal. Why would we want to do this? Uh, why would you want to use modeling language? Because you don't want to lose your time. You don't want to lose your time with writing uh, interfaces to solvers by hand. For example, the code here below would be a way to interface with IPOPT by overriding uh, a C++ class and then specifying a function that computes the gradient. You also wanna, don't want to derive uh, your derivatives by hand because it can be very error prone. And you don't want to lose time with keeping track of which variable belongs where in a flat factor. So modeling languages are interesting and sometimes make your life easier. Why would you consider Kasadi? Kasadi is an open source framework for algorithmic differentiation and nonlinear programming. It started out in 2010 and uh, Joel Anderson was the first developer I came in a bit later and then also Greg Horn. Kasadi feels a bit like a scripting language, but you can do some computer algebra system manipulations. Um, so it feels like a bit like a modeling language too. It's fairly easy to install. Just go to the link here, installkasadi.org. You can even try it live in your browser if you want. Okay, why? Uh, what are other advantages of Kasari? So we are a C++ project and we have interfaces to Python, MATLAB and Octave. So today I will uh, just present the MATLAB interface because MATLAB is kind of well known in the area of research where I'm in. Uh, another interesting feature of Kasari is that we can generate C code. Uh, we ship a lot of interfaces to solvers. Uh, we do a fair job at scaling well for large-scale problems. And this is mainly because we have an impl implemented an efficient... Uh, we have an efficient AD implementation. So algorithmic differentiation just performs better than symbolic differentiation. Um, for example, you could model problems like uh, optimal control, a single shooting problem. You can model them in, in any kind of symbolic framework. Here I've listed a few, SymPy from the Python world, uh, YALMIP uh, from the MATLAB world, and then MuPad, which is this built-in symbolic toolbox uh, from MathWorks. And you see if you get things right, you should scale linearly in the horizon length of your optimal control problem. If you don't know what optimal control is, don't worry at this point. Um, okay. How do we use this uh, opti functionality in Kasadi? First of all, you start with creating an environment, the opti environment. Uh, by default, um, the environment is empty, of course. But you can add variables. The variables can be uh, matrices, like xmat would be a uh, matrix, xvec. Uh, is a vector variable and x scala scalar is a scalar variable. Simple enough. Now once you have these symbols you can compose them into expressions. 
So let's have a peek at what X scale is. It has some label which has been created uh, internally. Um, but the nice thing is you can call you can call mathematical operations on this ex on this symbol to create expressions. So if we look at the printout of this expression variable, it's showing uh, us that it the expression is, is showing that it's computing a cosine of a multiplication of 0.1 times your variable. Um, under the hood, these are Casadi variables. And you can just query for, for example, the Jacobian. So if you take Jacobian or the derivative of a cosine, you would expect a sine. You can go to higher order derivatives, ask for the Hessian and so on. Um, all of this is symbolic at this point. Um, how can we use it? We can use it to specify objective and constraints. So when we say opti.minimize, we're giving the objective as an expression, as a symbolic expression. So sum is another mathematical operator that is overloaded for uh, our opti variable type. So here I'm building towards a uh, hanging chain problem. So we have a bunch of point masses, 25 to, to be exact, and they're hanging from two points on the left and the right, and it's subject to gravity. If we minimize the kinetic, the if we minimize the total energy in the system, we get kind of the equilibrium position of this uh, pendulum problem. The potential energy would just be um, mg uh, mass times uh, constant of gravity times the y coordinate, so the vertical coordinate. So that's what I've written here. So we're gonna build our optimization gradually. The Opti instance notices that there's just one variable now, uh, which in flattened form has 25 scalar elements. Why only one variable? Because the, in the objective only Y is appearing, not X. So the variables that you declare but never use, they will not be part of your optimization. Okay. Um, you can also add constraints. Each of the subject to line adds new constraints to the problem. In this line, you're specifying that the, the distance between two adjacent mass points should be equal to L. So this is where the chain gets its uh, consistency. On this line, I line, I'm specifying that the chain is suspended from the left from a point minus two, one, and from the right from a point two, two. I can also say uh, that the chain should be above some special curve. So I have all the freedom to add constraints as I like for my application. Then I declare a solver. So IPopt is a popular choice that we always give. IPopt is an interior point uh, NLP solver, which performs very well for offline problems. So we specify the solver and then you actually s hit solve. What can we see from this uh, output, from the IPopt output? Um, notice here, number of non-zeros in equality constraint Jacobian, number of non-zeros in Lagrange Hessian. So the Jacobian and the Hessian were automatically provided by Casadi in the background, so no need to worry about it. We see there's a bunch of iterations and in the end the optimal solution is found. Um, to retrieve the solution we can ask the solution object what the value is for x. And x is a symbolic vector, sol value of x is a numeric vector. And we can plot it in a very simple plot. Um, yeah, maybe one more thing. So sol value can take any expression, in fact. So the, the argument of sol.value value doesn't need to be an exact symbol, it can be any expression. It can even be 
objective, for example. Opti.f is a placeholder, is a link to the uh, objective expression. Um, actually, we can inspect the standard form for an NLP that is being constructed under the hood. So the standard form that I've used is minimize over x, x is the decision variables, of a function of x and p, where p is a parameter, subject to a set of constraints. And the uh, inequalities and equalities, they are all lumped together uh, in one, one tall vector. So if I ask for, um, let me see, OptiG is a link to the flattened uh, problem structure. So I can ask for the size, just a regular MATLAB command. So apparently we have 50 through 53 constraints in total. And OptiG is a Casadi symbolic expression. Um, for those constraints. Again, we can use uh, operators like Jacobian and Hessian. So we can do opti g with respect to opti x. So a bit hard to read, but let's see, um, let's plot the sparsity pattern. Uh, so you see the problem is very sparse. I mean, the constraint, each constraint, and each uh, row here is a constraint, uh, only has depends on very few decision variables on the columns. So each row has a limited number of um, entries, and this is exploited in the background in Casadi to compute this uh, Jacobian efficiently, and it's also exploited by the solver, by IPopt. Okay. Um, a, little, uh, trans uh, a little extra for uh, more experienced Castadi users. So because you can query the flattened uh, standard form that is in the background, uh, you can work with standard Casadi functions. So you can construct a Casadi function f that takes uh, symbolic inputs, x and p, and outputs symbolic output, OptiG in this case. So you could construct a function, and you see that it's mapping 50 variables to 53 constraints. And this function you can evaluate numerically, you can create a max function from it, you can create a plain C function from it that you could use in your embedded devices or whatever. So you got quite some flexibility. You can also uh, make symbolic calls to functions and embed them again in the in an opti environment. Okay. Um, you can also supply initial guesses for functions. So consider this uh, trivial problem. One scalar variable, and we are minimizing the sign of this variable, the sign squared. So it has a lot of local minima, uh, infinite amount. Um, yeah, here I'm just shutting off the, the printing. Yeah, you can pass options here if you want. Um, once I solve it, um, solution will be zero. Why? Because by default, the solver is started at zero for all decision variables. And zero is a minimum already. Now let's suppose uh, we set the initial uh, guess for x at six, which is about uh, two pi and we solve, we will get 2 pi uh, exactly. So set initial is the command to set uh, initial values. Uh, one other nice thing, a uh, feature of Opti is parametric NLPs. You can bake the structure of the problem once and then solve them efficiently one after another. So besides opti.variable, to construct a variable, we can do opti.parameter which constructs a parameter. Both are symbols, but they have a different semantics. The variable is tuned by the optimizer, the parameter is uh, fixed or baked by the user, uh, and can be updated from one problem to the next. Uh, so let's say we find a feasibility 
problem, the sine of x should equal p. IP opt solver, again, I'm shutting down the printing. Uh, and I give the parameter a concrete value just before I solve. Now we can retrieve the value. And then we can set p to a new value and solve again. Um, let's see, why doesn't this scroll? Uh, never mind. So you can see two numeric outcomes, they are different. Um, thing is, this will take quite some time. This is the first solve, but the second one will be very efficient because the structure is already baked in. Uh, you can use the structure, for example, to do a uh, model predictive control scheme where you solve an optimization problem online every uh, couple of seconds. Okay. Um, if your problem is modeled perfectly, you will get the perfect answer, no problem. But what should I do if the solver fails? So there are a bit of tricks in Opti that help the user debug. Um, let's see. I'm copy-pasting more or less the example from before, the hanging chain. The only thing I changed here is this line. So instead of L square here, I'm taking the square root. Only difference. Let's run this. Uh, bang. Problems. So what does it say? Return status invalid number detected. We can scroll up and we see NLP check G failed, none detected. And none was detected uh, in row one, column one of the constraint Jacobian. Okay, interesting. Let's see. Uh, we can ask Opti to tell us uh, which row belongs to which constraint. In this, in this case, it's saying, ah, my first row is actually coming from this line of code. Well, for us, it's obvious, it's a short code, but you can imagine if you have a thousand lines of code spread out over different files, it could be handy to find out where your numerical problems are stemming from. Same with the uh, decision variable. So the decision variable that's causing problem is x. So in our diagnosis, um, our diagnosis says that the problem is with the Jacobian of this constraint with respect to x. So why is this problematic? Well, think about it. What is the derivative of a square root? Let's say the square root of w with respect to w. It's equal to 1 over 2 over uh, the square root of w. Uh, and what if w is 0? Then we have a problem. So in this case, w is uh, this diff expression. Um, seems like there's a dot missing here. Um, and it's actually this expression that is 0 by default. Because the initial guesses are by default 0. So x will be a 0 vector, y will be a 0 vector. So the thing under the square root will be a zero vector. And we will run into this problem. By simply setting an other initial guess for x, we are making this expression non-zero. Problem goes away. Okay, that's problem one. What else could you encounter? You could have invisibility problems. So in this funny example, I'm requiring that the sign of two numbers is bigger than two. It's of course nonsense, but I mean, it's to showcase uh, the possibility to see where the problem is. So when you run this problem, you get uh, maybe only after 100 iterations or so, you get invisible problem detected. So what can you do with Kasadi? Uh, with Opti, sorry. Uh, there's this method, show infeasibilities, and it will list all the constraints that are causing infeasibility in the solution that IPOPT returned. So in this case, it's detecting that this guy is problematic. 
because it's supposed to be uh, bigger than two, but you're only getting up to one. Okay. Uh, another thing that could go wrong is uh, scaling of variables. Here is, uh, you don't have to read all of it, but it's a basic optimal control problem for a rocket. We have a bunch of uh, variables that represent state. So the rocket has a state, uh, the, as a state, the height, the velocity, the vertical velocity, and the mass. And we are creating a thrust uh, with, a, with a rocket. Yeah. And our goal is to end up at 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. We have an initial mass of 100 tons. We have system dynamics. And here we do a basic uh, multiple shooting loop. Um, right, and here we are setting uh, some extra constraints, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, let's solve this. Now I'm supposed to be able to scroll here. Why doesn't it work? It's a bit stupid. Let me jump back. Da, 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 da. Oh no, sorry. It was all there. The plotting routine is here. Yeah. Uh, after solving, we can also retrieve some uh, solver statistics. So here I'm plotting. Um, like the primal and dual infeasibility of IPOPT with respect to the number of iterations. So uh, what you would like is a line that goes down like this. It seems like IPOPT is having a lot of issues uh, solving this problem, even though it looks fairly simple. So what is the problem? The problem is ill-scaled. I mean, look at these numbers, 100,000 kilometers. Uh, sorry, 100,000 meters. 100,000 kilograms, variables are not well scaled. So what we can do is, original file was this, we will uh, pre-scale it with some uh, nominal values for the decision variables. So a representative height would be uh, indeed 100 uh, kilometers, a representative velocity would be 2 kilometers per second, the mass would be around this ballpark. Um, control effort is a lot, like the thrust is in Newton. These rockets, they are measured in, in mega Newtons. So I'm pre-multiplying with a big number here. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. Solve the problem. Let's look at the iterations. Ah, much nicer. Look at that. Only a couple of iterations. So uh, scaling can make quite a big uh, influence uh, on convergence. I also have a blog post about this, about scaling. Um, what else can we do? Uh, for debugging, it is interesting to see the intermediate solution uh, trajectory of your NLP. So the, the ability for to plot something at each iteration of the NLP is quite nice to have. And in Opti, we can access it by uh, this callback structure. So callback takes a function as input. And the function is called every iteration. And you can ask for the current uh, value just with opti.debug. Why debug? Because it's not converged yet. I mean, to have to be able to do sol dot value, you need the solution, and we don't have the solution yet, so we are asking for this debug information. Um, so let's see. We can get some interactive things like make a movie, but in this notebook, it's not easy to do. Um, so it's 
just plotting all of them uh, after each other. So these are all non-converged solutions plotted on top of each other, and one is the converged solution. So this can also really help to debug uh, your issues. Ah, take home message is also gone. Okay, so what is the message? Uh, first of all, Kasari is an open source tool that can handle large uh, NLPs, especially for optimal control. It has proven very useful. Uh, message two is that this OptiStack layer makes it even more easier than it was before to solve, uh, to model your NLPs and to solve them. And we have also used this uh, successfully in teaching. So that concludes my talk. Thank you for listening.